Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here or if you're a returning visitor and or subscriber, I welcome each and every one of you guys here to my channel today. I have tons of things to talk to you guys about, but before I do that, my name is Juan. I am a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict. And so, yes, I have tons of things to talk to you guys about today. Uh, before I even get into that, I kind of want to just put this out there. I've been putting it off for a couple of days now. I want to share this bit of information with you guys. I have tried to figure out a way to structure my videos to figure out how I was going to be able to roll out my content to you guys. I was trying to figure out if I should do weekly tutorials, weekly yarn reviews, and to be honest with you, that's just not who I am. Uh, I'm so structured in my day-to-day -day life that I need the release when I'm talking about something I'm extremely passionate about, which is yarn, crochet, the fiber arts. I need to be able to sit in front of this camera and just get it off my chest when it hits. So for some, this may come to you as good news. And for some, maybe not. I'm not so sure. I hope it's all good news. But when the mood strikes, I'm going to sit in front of this camera and I'm going to hit play and we're just going to go through the motions because there's tons of things that I need to talk about. As I'm getting more comfortable sitting in front of this camera, the floodgates are opening. All of the things are just coming out. And we're talking years and years of things that I have been doing, that I've been sitting behind closed doors, just practicing. Um, as a male in fiber arts, in crochet, in the yarn community, you know, we're, we're, it's very few and far in between. So, you know, you have to have a certain level of confidence to be able to break through those barriers and feel confident and comfortable in this environment. And for years, I just wasn't there. And it wasn't until recently that I just gave myself that little nudge to just put myself out there. So as I'm getting comfortable sitting in front of this camera, sharing all of my things with you guys, I'm also going to be sharing with you guys all of the things. So in order for me to do that in my way, I need to do that in a very unstructured way. So you may come across videos where they're back to back to back, or you may come across just one video that day or one video every other day. It's just going to be very unstructured. But one thing I will promise you guys is my content will be consistent. Like I will definitely roll something out because there's just so much um, going on here. So now that I have that off of my chest, I can talk about my stitch sampler beanie from Bag of Day Crochet. Um, if you guys have not been to her channel, I know a lot of my subscribers are from Bag of Day Crochet, so this doesn't pertain to you guys, but for those of you who are not familiar with Crystal from Bag of Day Crochet, please type Bag of Day Crochet in the search box. She's got over 1,100 tutorials. They're easy to follow. They're fun to do. This is a classic example of one of those projects. I put a splash of color on mine just because I felt compelled to do so. And her tutorials allow that structure for you to feel free enough to be able to do that. So um, I highly encourage you guys to go over there, um, check out her tutorials. They're pretty amazing. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is this. Now, I featured this in one of my other uh, videos the other day. But what I did not talk about was the inspiration behind this. So I was making another sweater for my mother, actually, with Pound of Yarn from Line Brand. I did a two-ply, I did two runs. I did one claret, 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 and then a charcoal color. And I made her an actual sweater with buttons, long sleeve, but no hood. And as I was doing that, I was browsing Bag of Day Crochet's tutorials, and I came across one where it was a cardigan. And... I was just compelled with what, what I was watching. I obviously knew how to make a cardigan sweater, but the way that she was doing it was not in a way that I was familiar with, and it was actually a lot easier. So I put that project down, and I started the project, and I followed along, and I said, you know what, that is so easy. She starts in the back, she goes up to the shoulders, down the one side, and then hops over to the other shoulder and goes down to a matching length. And then you stitch up the sides and then you do the arms. So easy, so fast. I started that project a Friday night. I was done by Sunday night. I did a two ply. Um, 
of Aaron. I, I, I keep wanting to say speckle, but I know that's not the right word. But if you go to Joanne's or to Yarnspirations and you see this, it's got the little speckles of brown and black. I can't think of the name right now because I have so much information that I want to share with you guys and I don't want to forget. But my point is, is that her tutorial allowed me to just put my own spin on it. So I did my own oversized hood because that's my, that's my style. That's kind of what I like. Um, and here's the full run of it. I keep moving this chair guys, but let me see if I can show you. It's got the ribbing on the bottom. It's an oversized sweater. Um, yeah, I intentionally made it that way. I actually thought in the beginning that I made it too big, but after I got some feedback from my viewers, I'm like, you know what? You guys are right. It's an oversized sweater. I should chill out and just enjoy the sweater. So that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying the sweater. So thank you again, Crystal. Two great projects. I ran past your tutorials, put my own little spin on it, and all is good. So again, guys, check out her channel if you're not already affiliated with Bag Day Crochet. Please, I implore you to do that. The next thing I want to talk about are the sweaters. So right now there's a thing going around with the Hexi Cardi sweaters and things, and many tutorials are out there about it. And I spoke about it in another video where I was going to do a herringbone stitch. As a matter of fact, Crystal from Bag o Day, she has a red Hexi Cardi in a herringbone stitch and it looks absolutely amazing. I was inspired to start this project because of that tutorial. This is what I'm talking about, guys. You have to really check her out. So anyway, um, I started it with this yarn. It is uh, Impeccable Loops and Threads and Charcoal Tweed. I loved it when I first got it. I still like it. Um, I'm a little annoyed at the fact of how it worked up because my first impressions are different now that I've actually worked with it. I've had to frog the project out like five times because I didn't really like how the stitches were laying next to each other. I think the yarn was a little too thin for me, for my liking. Um, so I, I frogged it out and said, I'm going to use another kind of yarn for that project. So I started back at ground zero and I did your standard granny square hexi cardi um, in charcoal tweed and a gray tweed. And I am only halfway done, but I still wanted to show you guys where I am at. So this is kind of where I'm at with this. That's the one side. And here is the other side. So I have two sides here that I'm working on. And what I'm going to do is, I'm obviously I'm going to add length here, and I'm going to do the sleeves. But with this yarn being as thin as it is, and there's nothing wrong with the thickness, I just think that with what I wanted, it didn't turn out the way I wanted, I guess, um, is what I'm trying to say. I am going to just run by the seat of my pants with that. I'm just going to keep going, keep measuring, do my thing. It's going to be black and gray. It's just going to be a thing. So I will update you guys on that and we will go forward from there. I will be showing you the yarn that I did choose for the original plan. So the herringbone stitch Hexi Cardi um, is still going to be a thing. I just changed up the yarn. So I will be showing you that. Next, I want to talk about a work in progress that I completely had to stop because I really don't like the fur, the hair, the fuzz. So this was a... Stitch, not a stitch along. So I am part of Mayor Maxim's Quarterly Crochet Club. And the most recent one that I received, it's been about two months now. Uh, let me see if I can print, not print, if I can show you guys the full picture. Here it is. So it's this one. 
The name of it is Spring Tiles Throw, and it's 38 by 47 inches. It's on their website now for, I think, 30 something dollars, but I received this kit before it showed up on the website. Maybe it was there and they took it off. I'm not sure. But the long short of it is, is I started it and I stopped it. And the reason why was because of that. Can you see that? Okay. Listen, I work with yarn that pills all the time. And... I am not this type of person, this this crochet that says I will only work with anti-pilling yarn. That's not it. I just did not expect this kind of hair. <laughs> Fuzz, I don't know what you want to call that. Um, yeah. I, I'm just not satisfied with how this is turning out. So I had to stop. I'm like, how do I continue this? knowing that this is the, the result that I'm getting. Now, the weird part about this is, this is using Mary Maxim's uh, Nako Mona Lisa yarn, which it feels amazing. Uh, listen, I'm not gonna steer you wrong, guys. It's, it's, it's amazing yarn. Um, it feels great, it's decent priced, it's $1.99 uh, right now on their website. And when left in the bag, it looks fine, right? This is how far I got so far with the, the squares. I had, there's 25 of them, okay, 25. But when I accidentally left one out of the bag, things started to appear, fuzz started to appear and the project is not even put together yet guys and look at that i'm concerned because what is this going to look like a year from now is this going to have to be a project that i only put out one day a year and then i have to fold it back up and put it in its plastic bag like i don't want that kind of a project in my house i think that projects should be made to last. You're putting a lot of your effort and time into a project. I feel it needs to be more durable than that. So this is where it's set. It's been in this bag for about a month and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if, I, I mean, there's so many pieces to this puzzle already that I can't frog it. Do I just finish it for the sake of finishing it and just give it away to charity? Um, but then that's my name stamp on it, you know? So I'm kind of torn because I don't want to give this away knowing what this is going to do. Maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know, guys. Talk to me. Tell me what you think. Uh, positive, negative, it doesn't matter. To me, feedback is feedback. I just think that is it worth I'm asking myself, is it worth completing? I mean, I all I have, I have two rows left on each tile, and then I have to stitch everything together with the white. So I am virtually, I'm not virtually finished, because I have to sew in my ends. And you've seen how many ends there are, so I'm about halfway done. Um, I don't know, guys. Tell me what you think, please. Now, before I sit this down, I pulled down out of my yarnscape here on the wall. I showed you guys before, I purchased a whole bunch of this Nako yarn. Not the Mona Lisa one, this is the Truvia yarn, the Truvia version. It's $1.99 a piece and I bought 20 skeins, 10 and 10. Blue and, what's this colorway? I, it doesn't say, I, I forgot. I think it's like oatmeal or something. But oatmeal and like a navy blue. See that? Now, the difference between the Mona Lisa and the Truvia is this is more of a matte finish. Whereas this Mona Lisa is more of like the Karen Simply Soft, but the fuzzier version. I don't, now that I'm saying that, I mean, I hate saying it that way, but 
in either case, I really like the yarn. I just, I don't care how it turned out. I'm really sorry about that. It's disappointing because I really enjoyed making it. Listen, the design is not my vibe. My intention was to never keep it for myself. It was either going to go to my mother as a gift or it was going to be donated anyway. But I just feel like, I don't know, guys. I can't put my stamp on that right now. So talk to me. Let me know what you think. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up to you guys is I have this idea of introducing stitch samples to my channel. Now, there's tons of videos already out there of different stitches uh, and the tutorials that surround them. I just wondered if there was any interest in me potentially showing you guys the stitches that I know. Um, for example, the arcade stitch. So, do a little sample like this and kind of show you guys how to make it. Maybe I'll do a finished product and show you guys. I don't know, it's just an idea. Um, this is using Karen one pound in the off white. Again, that's the arcade stitch. Very easy, very simple. Then I used for another stitch, this it kind of pulled out, but this is the peacock stitch. The yarn choice needs to be a little better, but this is the peacock stitch. And so yeah, stitches like that. Um, I was just wondering if there was any interest in that. Maybe it is something that I do um, and just try it. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I'm interested in hearing some feedback about that. So, yeah, in a nutshell, th there's my whip. That's my whip in a dead halt. Um, not sure what's going to happen with that, guys, but yeah, I'm perplexed. So, to say the least. Um, so, for this video, that's all I have. It's very short, sweet, and to the point. And yeah, so if you enjoyed the content of this video, please feel free to hit like, hit subscribe. I would love for you guys to stick around and watch my other videos. Um, I hope that, you know, I am something that you enjoy watching or listening to while you're doing your crochet and or knit and or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, that would be great. So yeah, that's all I have. And so until the next time, be safe, be kind and have an awesome day. Thank you.